All right, good morning. We are going to tackle Wireshark today uh, together. So I'm having a lot of students that are having problems with Wireshark. They're not understanding the content. They're, they're feeling lost. They're feeling disgruntled and frustrated, which is the opposite of what we want, right? We want you to go in here feeling good about yourself and, and feel like you uh, are ready to tackle the world, okay? So uh, I'm recording this video for the students. Uh, so that you guys can get a, a better grasp on this and hopefully hopefully you feel a little bit more confident about Wireshark as we're moving forward All right, so I've got on my system. You can see I've got three adapters. I've got Ethernet 2, 3 and then Wi-Fi uh, I've also got the loopback right there. Some people may have all connections available to them I'm going to use Wi-Fi today. This is a fresh install from scratch. There's nothing on here um, well, I, I don't want to say nothing because I had recorded this video before and then only to find out that uh, that I had screwed up and didn't have any sound on it, right? So it's just grabbing traffic right now. It's grabbing a ton of traffic as we see through here. So I'm gonna open up my Google Chrome here, right? And I'm gonna hit some websites. So we wanna hit those websites and I'm just gonna let it keep on going through. So I'm gonna hit unicorn items, unicornitems.com. That's a nice little HTTP website. So we can do some TCP in the clear. I'm going to hit Amazon.com. We'll let that go through. So we got some Amazon. I don't know. Let's do a little bit of Yahoo. Throw some Yahoo in there. And let's throw some YouTube. YouTube.com. We'll throw some YouTube in there as well. And let's actually play a video. We'll, we'll play a video. I don't know. I'm, I'm a big fan of Bellular. Let's, let's hit Bellular. We'll see what happens. You make course, smart choices to protect your loved ones it. every day. Uh, when it comes to protecting their financial future with... Right. Hey everyone. So today I think we need to have a bit of a mute that a little bit. So uh, we got that going on. All right, I'm gonna shut this down. We're good. We've got a fair amount of traffic's here. We got about 820. I'm gonna stop it, and I'm actually gonna save this PCAP file for you guys so that you can watch this or use or or follow along with me as we go through this. Right. So I'm gonna hit practice. I'm gonna save, um, and we'll do this one. So my goal is to make two, maybe three Wireshark videos today, so that we feel a little comfortable with it. All right, first thing we need to know, we have 900 packets, and you can see this at the very bottom right, okay? Very bottom right, we have 900 packets. I can also tell, because if you look at these little arrows at the very top right here, you see the one that says down with a little line underneath it? I'm gonna hit that, it'll take me to the very last packet, right here. If I press the one to the left with the arrow, le or excuse me, to the left of that, which is the up arrow with a line above it, that'll take me to packet number one. Right, simple. If I go to click on number one and I want to hit packet number two, I can literally press the up arrow or the over arrow, the right arrow, and it'll take me to packet number two. If I hit the left arrow, it'll take me back to packet number one. Pretty, pretty simple. Okay, so let's go into colors because I messed around with the colors and I didn't show you. If I go to view and I go down to coloring rules, you can see here that I've got all kinds of rules. Now, originally, TCP was set up. So if I wanted to change the color for TCP, for instance, I could go click on TCP, I could hit that background, and I could change it to whatever I wanted. So if I wanted like a, a neon green way down here, I could do that. I like the blue. Uh, I'm gonna keep it with blue because it kind of throws it out there and says, hey, I'm different. If I wanted to change the background for UDP, because I wanted to see UDP traffic change a little bit, maybe I'll change that over to, uh, well, I hate to use red. How about a nice, a nice bright pink. My, my daughter would love the pink, right? So we'll go with pink right there. And then I know that I've got a difference between it. Now, of course, UDP looks a lot like DCERPC. So I'm gonna click on that one and we'll change that to something else. I don't know, what do, what do we not have a lot of? I can use anything here. I'm gonna use green. I don't see any major dark green. Now that makes it a little bit hard to read, but that's okay. Uh, I don't anticipate having to use that anytime. So I'm just gonna press okay. And you can see now, that all the UDP traffic is this nice chartreuse pink color. Uh, I probably made a mistake with that. I think I did. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna change that a little bit. We're gonna go back to coloring rules. We're gonna go back to UDP. I'm gonna change that over to a lighter pink because I just don't know. We'll do we'll do something like this. I think that's a good color. Uh, yeah, I think that's gonna be a little bit better. There we go. A little bit a little bit better. Of course, now if I go to view, and I know I'm screwing around with colors, right? You guys didn't come around here to see me screw around with colors, but ICMP is up there. But I'm gonna make ICMP that dark, that that chartreuse pink. We'll we'll bring that up there. Make my dollar happy. Alright? So there we go. Alright. So I've got ICMP as this dark pink, and then I've got UDP as this light pink and then everything else. Alright, so I've got colors, and I could do that 
with any colors. I can actually make new colors if I wanted to, and I'll show you how to do that here in a minute. If I wanted to do a flag, for instance, if I want to do TCP flags dot send, and then I did equal equals one, right? And I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but that's okay. I walked right into this. I'm gonna hit enter. You'll notice that there's nothing in here. But if I did acknowledge ACK, and you may be asking yourself, why aren't there any, any sends? Well, it's because I'm on my home computer and the way I have my security set up, on this computer, it actually doesn't have any synchronizations coming from it. Um, I know it's weird, but it's it's a little bit of a, of a change, right? All right, so here I have my acknowledgements right here. Uh, these are the TCP flags acknowledge equals equals one. Well, how, how do I know those are acknowledges other than the fact that it shows it right here? Where am I really getting that from? If I go to the TCP control or the transmission control protocol, excuse me, and I expand that out and I scroll down, you see this flags right here and I expand this out you can see here, acknowledge one right there. That's what I'm searching for. That's what's going on right here, okay? I can save this too. I can grab that and I'm gonna hit this little plus sign right there. And I'm gonna call this TCP ACK, just like that, okay? I'm gonna save that and now it gives me a little bit of a press button right there. And I'm actually gonna grab that. I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna provide it. Oh, what did I do there? Oh, my zoom numbers, right? So let's do that again, TCP flags, acknowledge one, copy i don't know why it did that i must have pushed praised all right so copy all right now if i go to view and i go to coloring rules i can actually add another one i can press this plus button right here i can throw the filter in there just like that it's going to be a new coloring rule i'm going to call this tcp ack just like that and now i can change the color and i can go to background just like here and i can pick whatever color i want i'm going to change it a nice little yellow just like that and if i press ok you can see that now you're blinded by the yellow, right? I'm actually gonna blow the screen up because I, I'm looking at my OBS and it doesn't look like it's very clear. So I'm gonna blow this up a little bit, okay? So we've got, we got colors now, okay? I've got my packets over here, I got my time. Now if I do time, I'm gonna double click on that. Oop, I'm gonna go to the very beginning, put that little button right there. You can see that the, the time it provided because I clicked on the 72 is considered the top time. So what I need to do is I need to press on length, no source, we'll go with source, right? And then if I press that button, it'll come up to three. I just need to do number. We're just gonna do number, just like that. Come on, number, there we go, up to the top. Oh, it's because I got the TCP, I'm such an idiot sometimes, right? So we'll clear out those filters. There we go, there we go. All right, so now we've got one through 900 on the thing, on the packets, and I hit the down arrow, I got all the way to 900. All right, so we got a clear thing. Now, I wanna add fl uh, uh, columns up here, right? Because you'll notice I've got the number, I got time, I got source, destination, protocol, length, and information. I wanna add some more over here. I'm gonna right click on the columns at the very top, and I'm just gonna do column preferences. If I'm on a Mac, it's gonna be Wireshark preferences, all right? But column preferences right here, uh, and here are all my columns. So I'm gonna add three columns, just like so. I press that plus button three times. I'm gonna name the first one SRC port for source port. I'm gonna do the second one is gonna be destination port, DST port. The third one is going to be uh, time, but I'm gonna do regular time. So I'm just gonna put actual time, ACT time for actual time. Uh, and then I just need to add different modifiers to it. So right now they're all numbers. If I click on this, double click on the number and it's source port, I'm actually gonna drop down to source port right there. And I have source port, I have source port resolved and source port unresolved. I'm just gonna do regular source port, just like that. I'm gonna do destination port. I'm gonna scroll up to destination. And here you can see that it only gives me destination port resolved or unresolved. I'm gonna do resolved. And then actual time, I'm gonna double click on that one and I'm gonna go down to time, but I'm gonna do UTC time, that first one, which is gonna be the UTC date as year, month, day, and then it's gonna give me time. So I'm gonna press okay on that. Well, actually I'm not, I'm gonna hold off. So I wanna show you two different ways that I can push these columns where I want. This first one, this actual time, I'm just gonna grab it. I'm gonna move it. I'm gonna move it. Why aren't you moving? I'm gonna move it. Uh, I'll tell you what. All right, so view, excuse me, uh, right click, then column preferences. I don't know why it wouldn't let me move it. We're gonna move it. 
Ah, it's not liking it. That's okay. So if that doesn't want to work, for whatever reason, this one doesn't work for me. That's fine. I'm just going to go all the way to the right. That's not even showing up. What is going on here? Let's go to column preferences. All right. It doesn't want to go. What's going on here? So we got this. We got all of them. Show displayed columns only. Press OK. Are you going to provide it now? You know, I hate, I've done this a million times, and this is the first time I've ever had an issue with this. A line left. What is going on? Why are you being mean to me? All right, no big deal. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close this down and restart it for Wireshark, and it should fix it for me. So one sec. All right, now you'll notice that when I restarted it, because I saved my packet, it's right here. So I'm just going to click on that packet right there. Okay, and I think it should have fixed it, and it did. So it was just having a hiccup. All right, so they're there now. If I go all the way to the right, you can see I've got set source port, destination port, and actual time. I'm gonna grab source port, and I'm just gonna drag it over here, and then I'll drag it over to the source right there. Uh, if I didn't wanna do that, and I could double click to get that, just like Excel, let's get over there. If I didn't wanna do that, you could go to column preferences and see where it says actual time. I can drag it over here. My gosh, this thing just does not wanna work for me today. What about destination port? Is it gonna work for me? Not gonna work for me, that's okay. All right, so I'm going to go, oh, it actually got rid of it too. Look at that. It's not there anymore. It's just Wireshark is just not having it today. They're like, no, I'm not going to deal with you. So one sec, we'll redo it again.